Okay, well, it's my pleasure to be here. I'm, I'm excited to talk about this, uh, uh, to be at this conference. I, I'm a relative newcomer to this area. I, I began this uh, research in 2010, uh, just a little over three years ago. Uh, and so I'm still learning a great amount uh, and have much more to learn. Uh, but as an academic, we tend to approach things a little differently than, uh, than um, policy professionals or, or, uh, uh, or others might. And so, it, you know, it, it provides perhaps a different insight into, into, uh, uh, into this realm that you know uh, very well. So um, uh, this is work uh, with Michael Findley and Jason Sharman, my two co-authors. Um, and, uh, and Shiran Baradaran, uh, uh, a piece has been published in the Minnesota Law Review. Uh, a piece is forthcoming in the, in, the, in the University of Pennsylvania Law Review. Uh, and it's also forthcoming as a book uh, with Cambridge University Press, same title, Global Shell Games, different subtitle. Uh, the, 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 the publisher uh, encourages us to, to jazz it up a little bit. And so it's uh, uh, Experiments in Transnational Relations, Crime, and Terrorism. So uh, that's, uh, that, that was the concession to the, edit, the, the, the publisher. Um, if you're interested in any of those pieces, would like, uh, would like a copy, a PDF file, happy to include them for the book manuscript uh, before it's actually published. Um, and uh, uh, just email me at that email address, uh, dan underscore nielsen at byu.edu, and happy to send. Uh, we're, we're very interested. I mean, we're, we're not yet, you know, the, 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 the manuscript's not yet uh, finished. I should say that the manuscript is, we, 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 finished, we turned in the final draft, but there's still a chance to change and, and copy edit. So uh, if, there, if there are errors or other things, uh, we're, we're very interested in learning and, and correcting those before we go to final press. Um, let me begin uh, with a story that starts the book. Um, this is Lu Zhang. Uh, some of you are familiar with her, her story. Uh, many of us, uh, I certainly wasn't. Um, uh, she was a recent immigrant to New Zealand, uh, and she worked as a short order cook at Burger King. Um, but little known to her, she was also a notorious uh, international financial criminal uh, and arms trader. Um, uh, the, uh, the Thai special forces apprehended uh, a, a cargo uh, uh, jet uh, that was on its way from North Korea to Iran, and its, and its uh, uh, hold was crammed with 3,000 pounds of, of weapons, uh, 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 anti-aircraft missiles, rocket launchers, uh, other kinds of things. Obviously, this is not a good thing when two of the three axes of evil are involved in, uh, in, an, in, a, in, a, in an embargoed ar arms trade. Uh, and um, the manifest for the airplane uh, said that, it, that, it, that the, uh, the, the shipment was uh, commissioned by SP Trading Incorporated. Uh, it turns out that was a, a shell company. Uh, and and uh, Lu Zhang was the nominee director uh, of, the, of the shell. Uh, and, and 73 other shells, uh, it turns out. Um, it, it, to supplement her income, she was hired by the GD, GT Group in New Zealand uh, to sign whatever documents they put in front of her, $15 a document. Uh, and she became the nominee director of, of the 74 companies. Um, and uh, the New Zealand police finally released her when, when they realized she, had, she knew nothing whatsoever about the arms trade or about anything else uh, with these companies. Uh, she was just a patsy. Um, and and uh, what's interesting is that, is that uh, other than the fact that she'd given a false address, she'd given, she'd given her work address as the address of these companies instead of her home address. If she'd given her home address, no laws would have been broken. She was charged with 74 counts of false address, but immediately released when they realized that she knew nothing uh, of, of value uh, to the investigation. So, um, uh, some of you have heard of this uh, story too. This is a house in Wyoming uh, that houses um, Wyoming Corporate Services Incorporated. Um, and and uh, next to him, uh, or next to the house, is uh, Pavel Lazarenko. Um, he is uh, currently serving a nine-year federal prison sentence in uh, California uh, for money laundering and fraud uh, and extortion. Um, uh, he was the former prime minister of Ukraine. Transparency International named him the eighth most corrupt politician of all time. Uh, and uh, uh, more on him in just a moment. So. Um, so why only Corporate Services Incorporated? Uh, this, you know, these are the kinds of, this is the kind of organization that, that gives your industry, uh, in, my, in my view, an undeserved bad name. Uh, and uh, uh, here's, here's, what, here's what it is. Um, 
2,000 mailboxes in, in the main room of the small house in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Uh, each one, ha the, the official residence, the official uh, address for, for a shell company. Um, and uh, uh, of course, as you know, uh, these are not uh, companies in the way that we think of, uh, think of them as having employees uh, or, or uh, pensions and so, and so forth. They're just uh, shell companies, legal persons that are still very important uh, for being legal fictions. So um, here's, here's what different companies at Wyoming Corporate Services Incorporated have, have been involved in. Uh, so uh, fraudulent uh, defense contracting, human trafficking, uh, in, illegal internet poker, uh, subprime credit cards, and uh, they still shelter Pavlo Lazarenko's considerable real estate assets that he has not yet uh, um, had removed from him. So. Um, so um, as, you, as you probably read in the program, uh, my, my collaborators and I uh, posed as consultants, uh, assumed aliases, uh, and sent thousands of inquiries to uh, corporate service providers